The shooting takes place at YouTube's headquarters, bias and crime rates in New Jersey rise, and Panera Bread experiences, experiences a data breach. All this and more on this episode of Hawk TV News. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Hawk TV News. I'm Jill Murphy. And I'm Katie Prey. The woman who shot three people at YouTubers headquarters in Northern California has been identified as San Diego resident Nassim Agdam. The woman took her own life after wounding three people at the campus in San Bruno. A fourth person suffered an ankle injury while escaping the gunfire. The shooter is believed to know at least one of the victims. Authorities currently don't know the motive for the shooting but they are investigating a website that appears to show the woman accusing YouTube of restricting her videos. Police responded to the scene within two minutes of the initial 911 call, and victims are expected to make full recoveries. Bias and crime rates have risen nearly 14% in the state of New Jersey since 2016. State Attorney General Gerber Graywall attributes the rise in crime rates to the campaign and election of Donald Trump. The state's increased rates mimic the national trend reported by the FBI that saw a 6% rise when over 7,000 offenses were reported in 2016. The number of hate crimes in New Jersey were on the decline in 2010 and hit a low of 367 before spiking to 417. Middlesex County reported the largest number of incidents at 80, a 14% increase from the previous year. Panera Bread may have exposed personal information of millions of customers for eight months. It is reported that 10,000 customers were affected. However, a security expert says this breach could affect as many as 37 million people. Addresses, names, emails, and credit card information of customers were available to anyone who looked at the plain text version of Panera's website. No payment information or full credit card numbers were stolen. Panera temporarily took down its website and remove the personal data. Jake Viscucci, a Long Branch police officer, has pleaded guilty to driving drunk and killing a woman on September 22, 2017. The charge he has pleaded guilty to is vehicular homicide. This carries a 364-day term set to take effect as sentencing in June. He will be forced to resign from his job as a police officer. The victim was 66-year-old Karen Barkowski, resident of Stanhope. She was attempting to cross a Long Branch street when she was struck and pronounced dead at the scene. According to dashboard camera evidence, the light was green and the victim was jaywalking. Donald Trump's conflict with CNN started up again in April on April 2nd when he tweeted out that CNN is fake news media. He also said that CNN's president, Jeff Zucker's job was in jeopardy and that the news channel should go back to honest reporting. CNN responded via Twitter saying that the personal political beliefs of CNN employees are in no interest to the news corporation and that their only concern is the pursuit of the truth. President Trump later tweeted that CNN is saying that their ratings were challenged and CNN replied saying that they finished their second highest quarter in the past nine years. We now go to Jack Reibel for the top five places to get pizza. Hey guys, I'm here with your weekly sports update. Just kidding, I'm here today with the top five pizza places you can visit while you are at the shore this summer. If you want to be extra basic this summer, you can stop by Porta Pizza on Ocean Avenue in Asbury Park. Porta is made famous by the thousands of Instagram pictures taken in front of the three doors, which read, eat, drink, be honest. However, contrary to common belief, there is in fact pizza inside. This hotspot is one of the best places on the shore to grab pizza for dinner before hitting the club attached to the restaurant at night. The fourth spot on our list is Luigi's Pizza, located on Main Street in Neptune City. Luigi's has a traditional style of pizza, but you can also get their pie in a 16 slice square. This hidden gem is great for grabbing a quick bite for takeout before hitting the town. At number three, we take a trip down to Main Street and Bradley Beach to Vic's Italian Restaurant. If you love sauce, this is the perfect spot for you. Vic's uses their homemade marinara in every pie and it is sure to please. Make sure you call ahead as there can be a quite a long wait, especially in the summer. At number two, we have Federico's on Main Street in Belmar. This spot has been around for decades, and with the summer right around the corner, you can expect the St. Rose kids to clear out just in time for a little meal before you head on down to the beach. 
And the best spot on the shore is Pete and Elda's on Highway 35 in Neptune. This is the ideal spot if you want a thin pizza, but even more ideal if you are looking for a quick bite before spending a Saturday night with the boys. Well, that's all for me. See you guys next semester. Back to you guys at the desk. We have to take a short break, but stay tuned for more Hawk TV news. TV news and we've got it covered. This is Hawk TV news. April 4th marks 50 years since the death of civil rights activist Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A few days before his assassination, Dr. King was invited to a Newark High School by then 17-year-old Winthrop McGriff. McGriff was elected class president at Southside High School in 1967, where Dr. King accepted the invitation to speak to the senior class. McGriff said that Dr. King's speech addressed the importance of learning and staying in school in order to have a successful life. Governor Phil Murphy is looking to spend approximately $100 million to fight the opioid crisis in New Jersey. The money for this initiative would come directly from the budget he proposed earlier this year. In an address he made at the Addiction Recovery House in Trenton, he explained that $87 million would go towards prevention and, and treatment efforts. The remaining $13 million would go towards new technologies to be implemented at treatment centers. Murphy has made it clear that he doesn't, want, doesn't intend to have any money into public service announcements, a move that was notably made by former Governor Chris Christie. A new study is claiming that one-third of all cases of dementia worldwide could be prevented if certain lifestyle factors are accounted for. The study by the First Lancet Commission on Dementia Prevention and Care states that factors such as hearing loss, smoking, and depression can all lead to dementia later in life. There is no known cure or medical treatment for this disease, but the Commission believes that limiting these factors will help the effort to combat dementia in the future. Obamacare enrollment in New Jersey has dropped nearly 20,000 people since 2017. This comes following major cuts made by the Trump administration back in the fall of last year. The average monthly premium of Obamacare is up nearly 100 dollars from 480 last year. National enrollment has dropped nearly 400,000 since 2017 and nearly 1 million since 2016. Prisoner reentry programs are facing cuts under Phil Murphy's proposed budget. The New Jersey Reentry Corporation, a nonprofit run by former governor Jim McGreevy, is looking at a 100% reduction in funding from the state. The NJRC had hoped for an increase of state funding from $4 million to $5 million. 
but what they got instead was described as ludicrous by McGreevy, who claimed that sending addicts to rehab instead of prison would save $40,000 a year per person. This proposed move was also condemned by Assembly Minority Leader John Bramnick, who praised the organization's ability to find work for ex-addicts. Retail chain H&M is in trouble yet again. Based on its recent quarterly reports, the store has lost $4.3 million unsold, in unsold clothes. The drop is reportedly to competition and consumer demands. H&M gained popularity because of its ability to turn runway fashion pieces into more afford affordable options for consumers. The retailer faced criticism in January when an advertisement of a sweatshirt with the caption, coolest monkey in the jungle, modeled by a black child, circul circulated on social media. The company also had to close their stores in South Africa. We have to take another short break, but stay tuned for more Hawk TV news. Listen, all it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize, You feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me, now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me, I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. We now go to Vincent Quaranta, who covered Mammoth's Battle of the Charities event. What's going on, guys? We are here at the Mammoth University Library, where youth activists are holding their second annual Battle of the Charities. I just want to take a look around and see what this event has to offer. Battle of the Charities is 10 different bands, 10 local bands, representing 10 local charities and raising money to give to everybody. And our goal is to get, like, past $2,000. Here because we have purpose, you know. We, you know, there's something that we have to do, and it's to make the world a better place. I think it helps students realize what impact they have in the world, and that there are a lot of good things out there that you could be doing. I think it's great for uh, moms to have a community. Hawk TV is here. Shadow is here. We have a bunch of local bands from Hawk Radio, and it's just really cool to have everybody together. I think that this is really important for us. I gotta say, this event looks like a lot of fun. So I'm gonna go stick around. Some more. We now go to Ryan Sullivan for an NHL update. The NHL playoffs are set to begin this week as the league's best will begin their quest for the Stanley Cup. During the postseason, anything can happen. However, there are a few favorites who have the strongest chance of winning it all. The Tampa Bay Lightning have been the best team in the Eastern Conference all year. Led by the dynamic duo of Nikita Kucherov and Steven Stamkos, they are primed for a long playoff run. To do so, they will have to dethrone last year's champion, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Out in the West, the Nashville Predators have played great team hockey all year. They also have one of the best goalies in the league in Pekka Rene, who they can rely upon in high-pressure situations. The surprise team of the year has been the new expansion team, the Las Vegas Golden Knights. The Knights have a good mix of young talent and veteran leadership. 
that they hope will that they hope will help continue their impressive season when it matters most. That's all I have for this week. Back to you guys at the desk. Snapchat is introducing several new features, including the ability to make group video calls and mentions feature allowing using users to tag friends in snaps uploaded onto stories. The video chat feature will allow up to 16 friends to conduct a video chat with each other simultaneously in recent months. Snapchat has also added other features, including deluxe Bitmoji customization, Map Explorer, and custom face lenses. Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan Tatum announced April 2nd that they are separating after nearly nine years of marriage. The couple posted a joint statement on their Instagram pages saying that they have lovingly chosen to separate as a couple and have had a magical journey together. The couple first met while filming the 2006 movie Step Up and married in 2009. They also have a young daughter together. The world's largest music streaming service, Spotify, made its debut on the New York Stock Exchange with an initial set price at $132 per share. The trades opened at $105, and the company has a value of $29.5 billion. Spotify is available in 61 countries with an overall user base that includes ad-supported free listeners of 159 million and 70 million paying users. Co-founder Daniel Ek is the current CEO of the company. Creators of Stranger Things, Matt and Ross Duffer, are being sued by a filmmaker for taking the idea of Stranger Things. Charlie Kessler believes the brothers took the idea from his short film Montauk. The short film won an award at the Hamptons Film Festival in 2012. Both brothers deny ever seeing Montauk, nor discussing any projects with Kessler. The hit Netflix series Stranger Things released its second season this past fall and will be coming out with a third season in the coming months. We have to take another short break, but when we return, Roland Francois has an exciting recap on Mama Sports. Extra Point is Hawk TV's only sports show, and what I love about The Extra Point is that it allows people to really come on and talk about what they're passionate in, and that's sports. When I first got here, I didn't really know what to expect. It was really a fun time. This is the most fun I've had in college so far. It's really not as competitive as people will think it is. I've been on air for almost every episode of Extra Point. Unscripted debate is probably the best format for sports shows today, and I think that's what's growing. So more than anything else, The Extra Point just provides people to come on Hawk TV and talk about what they love, and that's sports. Tony Lynn, what's it like being a producer? It's so much fun, especially when I get to work with Matt. You put in a lot of work to try and get your moves right. You want to make the, the show look as smooth as possible. You don't want choppy zooms in and out. You want to make it look like the camera's not even there. This is my first time at the Extra Point. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm coming back now. They've got me hooked. I control this switcher right here, and I pretty much make the, uh, what the director says happen. This is the moment, tonight is the night. Slowly zoom out, and fade to black. Like 
gorgeous. That is how it's done. We make big TV here. We practice. We execute. We get paid. That's, Nick, that's all right. I throw a couple of 15 second PSAs in there and we're You're good. Done. Yeah. You're done. Let's take one more look at how your Hawks are doing this semester. The baseball team was swept by Quinnipiac in a three-game set on April 7th and 8th. The bats disappeared for the team as they scored three runs in each game. Shane Hughes and Zach Childs each had an RBI in each of the three games. The loss marks the second time that the, that the men have been swept this season as they fall to 8 and 18 on the season. The Hawks will stay at home for a while as they begin a homestand against Columbia, Maine, Sacred Heart, and Rutgers. They all begin on April 11th. The softball team took two of two games from Ryder on April 6th, three to, three to nothing and seven to four. Amanda Riley picked up her eighth win of the year in the first game of the doubleheader and Lily Robbs got her third in the latter half. Riley allowed only three hits and what was her first complete game shutout victory and sixth complete game victory of the year. The women have won four in a row as they improved to 12 and 13 of the year and will have a chance to be over 500 for the first time since early March as they face Manhattan on April 14th. The men's lacrosse team beat winless NJIT on April 17th, 10 to four. The men finally earned their first home win of the season after struggling to close out the first four games at Kessler Stadium. Mom of the scoring leader, Bryce Wasserman netted three goals. However, Griffin Figuel scored four to lead the Hawks of the day, on the day. Noel Lode had 11 saves as the men picked up their fifth win of the year. The Hawks closed out the regular season with two of three games at home with their first of the set against Marist on April 14th. The women's lacrosse team picked up two big conference wins against Fairfield and Canisius. On April 4th, they took down Fairfield 14-11 behind Alexis Smith five goals. On April 8th, the women put up 14 more goals as they defeated Canisius 14-12. With snow falling in Buffalo, New York, three Hawks netted a hat trick as Caroline Corbills, excuse me, uh, Chloe Novak and Alexis Smith totaled nine goals. The women have been rolling recently. They won, four, they won three of four and put up 14 in all, 14 goals in all three of the wins. The Hawks will face Niagara on April 14th in West Long Branch. The men's tennis team picked up a pair of victories against w Wagner and Army on April 7th. The men swept Wagner 4-0 after taking four single matches. Later in the day, they took down Army 4-3 as they won four single matches and one double set. Will Cook Wharton picked up a single and double win against Army. It's all conference play for the men from here on out as they begin on April 14th against Siena and St. Peter's before facing Ryder and Fairfield on April 15th. That's all I have for you for this week. For more on your college and pro sports, be sure to tune in to The Extra Point right here on Hawk TV. Back to you guys at the desk. That's all for the semester of Hawk TV News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jill Murphy. And I'm Katie Prey. Be sure to tune in next fall when Hawk TV News returns. We wish all of our viewers a great summer. <laughs>day today because we are here live at the Plangier Center here at Monmouth University 
getting ready for Rock and Raise 2017, and we're all pretty pumped. The energy in here is very exciting. Rock and Raise is a live benefit concert that is broadcast live on our closed circuit student TV station, Hawk TV, Channel 12, here at Monmouth University. And um, it's an event that we all come together. We have a lineup of great live acts um, to raise money for the American Cancer Society. So it's really important to us to all work together and to always support great causes in our community. So that's what we're trying to do today. I'm really now freaking out. About to host yeah. Rock and Raise 2017. It's a huge honor. I've got this paper cut. I'm wounded. I don't know where. You're um, the one handling all the paper. I because I'm I'm the one that's staying organized. You uh, know, I go by the paper by I the schedule. Dylan over here is just willy nilly. Guess who's gonna mess up? Dylan. You. I did this all last night. I ran I through this heard. 30 times. It's like two o'clock right now. It's about an hour before we go live. So. We're going to get everybody situated so we can do a practice run through of switching between the studio and in the lobby, make sure everyone knows what they're doing and that all of our equipment is working. Who's looking for me? Ben, the band? Someone, yeah. yeah. The uh, guy with the white guitar? Hey, What's up? Yeah. Uh, is it your wire? I have no clue. It can be your wire. Well, it was working fine yesterday. I mean, I mean. Sure. Mark. Does your guitar take batteries, Mark? We're stressed. One of the amps isn't working, but we're going to fix it. Uh, we just did a sound check, so now we're going to do some run-throughs, and after that, we're going to be ready to go. We do run-throughs and sound checks just to get everyone uh, familiar with what they're doing. The sound check's really important, so we get a nice clean sound and we're not doing it the uh, second before. And the run-through helps all the cameras and the directors get to know uh, how, how the show's gonna go, how it's gonna go down. We're here at the promo table, we have some lovely raffles, we're selling tickets, and we have lollipops, so best place to be. This board is just everything that's going on with the audio, it's normalizing. Every single little piece of microphone, every uh, band setup, every different little piece that we have all around the studio. Basically, um, there's going to be interviews going on and raffles, so every time that happens, I'm queuing them and make sure everything's on time. I'm here at the Monty Television Studio here in West Long Branch to get the scoop on what's going on. That's how it's done. Let's uh, take notes, cut and dry how it's done. It's cut and dry. I'm here hosting Rock and Rays. It's going to be a great time. We've got some great bands here, great people. Uh, it's like equal parts rocking and raising. I'm excited for counting down to going live. I love that moment when we start. And then it's uh, like a couple minutes into the thing, I'm completely absorbed. And then all of a sudden, I have this moment of panic, sheer terror. My stomach drops out. And I look over at the server to make sure the numbers are rolling and that we're actually recording the event. Because although we're live, we also record. I do that every single production. Uh, have you ever seen Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen play together? Yeah. Right here. So signage is a very important logistical aspect of our event, and so I'm trying to make it very clear where people need to go in order to get the tickets. However, where I have to hang these, I need to go around the corner, but if I put a left arrow, that doesn't make sense, so. Uh, we just had a mic that was off by the stake, so I had to go fix that, but now I'm back in. Oh, um, yeah, me too. Wow. That's incredible. And I walk backwards when I do it. That's going to be for the promo. Watch out, phone's right behind you. Just kidding. <laughs> you even made me drop one. This is, uh, this is Rock and Raise. Uh, we're, Not Rock and Roll. We're, we're rocking and raising, raising money for the American Cancer Society. Uh, lovely event uh, hosted by Hawk TV and also WMCX, Mr. Michael Peach Bass. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't get to see the event. I only get to hear it, but we are here in the WMCX studio where all the magic in the plan year building happens. Uh, my job today is to board out the event, so I'm going to be talking back and forth with Nick Carlasio, getting them on and off the air, uh, because I believe we're simulcasting this. So. Yes, we are. Cool. We'll be the behind-the-scenes work up here at the X. <laughs> Yeah, seven and a half minutes. Here we go live. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
kind of nervous, but it's going to be fun. All right, crew, let's go. In your spots. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fade up to camera two, open mic's cue.